Y'all get ready? Yes, you get ready. Shout out to all my tea sippers out there. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your tea cups ready because you already know this tea is what? Piping hot. All right, you guys, so I want to come on here and talk about this whole situation once again with T.I. and Iggy Azalea, okay? They are still damn beefing. Now, if you guys remember the video I did last week about the situation, it's not escalated even more. Now, we did get a chance to meet T.I. at YouTube Black. He did come and talk about the Trap Museum and all that stuff. But either way, I still have a damn job to do. That is to spill tea and give my opinion on all this damn fuck shit that's going on between the two of them, Okay. So what happened is this. Basically, T.I. went on to the Breakfast Club and Charlamagne was asking him about what he said about Iggy the week before, which he basically stated that Iggy Azalea was the biggest blunder of his career. So Charlamagne the God asked him to expound on that and that is what T.I. did. Y'all go ahead and check this out and I'm gonna come back with the rest of my commentary. Why did you say Iggy was your biggest mistake? I didn't say my biggest mistake. I said, somebody said, what in your career? The question was, what in your career do you think you still have to accomplish and I said well I gotta find uh, an, I gotta introduce another female <clears throat> to the game that can undo the blunder of Iggy Azalea why was she a blunder though well I mean I really feel like she, like she was meant to be great she was for a moment see that no 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 what happened was in my this is just my opinion and mind you I didn't say this to really speak down on shout mm -hmm. like I'm just this is my truth okay you know what I mean it's my truth and I'm sharing it uh, but uh, I'm not speaking down on her. I don't wish no ill will on her. You know, she happens to be the biggest thing tomorrow. Great. But as far as I'm concerned, I feel like when she found out white people liked her and she didn't need black people mm -hmm. to like her anymore, she switched up, mm -hmm. started acting different, made moves that I wasn't proud of, mm -hmm. that kind of place my reputation in the line of fire and and she was very she was very arrogant about it you know what i mean and i feel like that energy mm -hmm. you know led to motherfuckers like yeah we ain't fucking with that right. you know and also outside of when, like the raps were dope at first you know what i mean of course she had writers help yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, you know, it was dope at first. And then it just, and then she exposed herself so much and you know, and it just What the sway freestyle? All of it. Just yeah. everything. Twitter. You know yeah. what I mean? Just all of it. And I feel like it just kinda it undid all the... All right, so you guys just heard what T.I. had to say. And basically, he's claiming that Iggy started acting different once white people discovered her. So this entire situation is a hot damn mess. And anyways, Iggy was really mad about that. She was not feeling what T.I. said about her on The Breakfast Club. So she took to her damn social media, honey. She took to Twitter and got the tweeting her heart out. She was going off, only to delete all this shit. But too late now, bitch, because we got screenshots, okay? So y'all go ahead and check this out. And I'm going to come back with the rest of my commentary. So Iggy says, when will this guy shut up? The only song you were ever a part of was 100. Thank you for that. But you are not a part of the creative or executive process on that album, which is why I've always taken issue with you trying to approximate yourself with its success. Then she says, seeing a man speaking out of his asshole and blurting out one thing in public and another thing in private for years, really infuriating. Keep it pushing, sweetie, and worry about what's your next storyline for Family Hustle. Please move on and speak about artists you are hopefully actually helping and stop trying to bring me up for relevance i don't bring your ass up no one is asking about you i'm trying to be nice because i generally have better and more interesting things happening and then somebody uh tweets her and they say he said he wrote for you when you had ghost writers she says he has never helped me write a song other than 100 Check the writing credits. I don't have ghost writers, but I do write with multiple people on songs, especially big pop leading ones. Yes, I have never claimed otherwise. Look at the pub credits. It's public information. Honey. When I tell you Iggy Azalea said, you know what, I'm tired of this shit, T.I. Keep my damn name out your mouth. I don't understand why he keeps bringing her up. 
at this point in time, I, I'm I'm wondering, like, what, did y'all have some type of sexual relationship? Did y'all fuck? Because it seems to be like a lot of tension, especially coming from T.I. because Iggy has been minding her own business, but T.I. won't keep Iggy's name out his dang on mouth. Like, I just don't understand this. You know, my thing is this. How is she all of a sudden, you know, once white people discovered her, she started acting white, but you were the one peddling her around. You were the one trying to force her down hip-hop's throat. See, the problem is this, okay? I see through the bullshit. I'm gonna keep it all the way 100, okay? T.I. thought he was going to be the next Mari star. For y'all who don't know, because, you know, I was really young around this time as well, but I watched behind the music. That's how I found out this piece of information. Mari star is the man. They call him the general at that. He's the guy who discovered New Edition, okay? He was New Edition's manager. He discovered them. He got them the contract and everything else. Then what he did, he took that same formula, of discovering new edition, he went and did the same thing, but this time he did it with five white boys called New Kids on the Block. Y'all remember damn New Kids on the Block? Oh, 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 the right stuff. <laughs> yes, I had a New Kids on the Block album, t-shirts, all that stuff, okay? So I bring that up to say this. I feel like T.I. tried to do the same thing Maurice Starr did. Maurice Starr, he saw some success with New Edition, but he saw mega success with New Kids on the Block. When he emulated that same formula with these black kids from Boston, then he went and got some white kids from Dorchester. <laughs> I don't know if I said that right. That's my Boston accent, okay? So when he went and did that with some white kids, and it just, I mean, it took off. New Kids on the Block, they were literally a phenomenon, okay? In 1986, a fresh boy band burst onto the bubblegum scene and chewed straight into New Edition's audience. The brainchild of one-time manager Maurice Starr, the all-white New Kids on the Block had everything from slicker marketing to their own collectible dolls. They doing their songs and shit. Hanging tough. Hanging tough. I be like, what the f? We're up, up, up. They're the white new edition. Period. I think if new edition was white, they would have definitely been just as big, if not bigger, than new kids on the block. Damn, man. $800 million in t shirts and stuff, man. Damn, doll babies and underwears and blankets and shit. Like, damn, man, why we don't got none of that? <laughs> we ain't gonna give anybody any slack. And to have Maurice involved as well. You know, I mean, I'm like, man, what happened? With new kids, I mean, you couldn't go wrong. I mean, we had over 4,000 products out there, different products, and, and everything was selling. New kids sleeping bag, mm -hmm. new kids phone, new kids dolls, new kids Walkman, um, new kids puzzles, new kids tapes, new kids books, new kids videos. <laughs> everything was selling, everything, so you couldn't go wrong. I mean, you so they made everyone money. So I feel like T.I. tried to do the same thing with Iggy Azalea. They had Nicki Minaj out there, Lil Wayne was winning, Young Money was winning. So let me do the same formula, get a white girl, any white girl obviously, cause he done got her all the way from Australia. Cute girl, you know what I'm saying? Get her some implants, you know, get her ass done and then have her be the white version of Nicki Minaj. And that's how they try to create her image. She was supposed to be the white woman taking over hip hop, just like Eminem was a white man who took over hip hop, okay? That's what they were trying to do with Iggy Azalea. But the problem is Eminem can really spit. He can really freestyle, he really has skills. Not to knock Iggy, because Iggy definitely has some bangers, she definitely has some good music, and Iggy is really cool. You know, I, I do genuinely like Iggy, okay? So, not to knock her, but Eminem is far more talented than an Iggy Azalea. But that's what they were trying to do back then. They were trying to make her the white version of Nicki Minaj. And so when the black folks, especially the black women, weren't buying it, because you know, it's mainly black women who buy and support music. So when black women weren't feeling that, and she wasn't taken off in the way that they thought that she would. Now T.I. is salty and he wants to keep, you know, throwing shade at her and acting funny towards her. And it's not okay. Because, like, again, she doesn't mention T.I.'s name. She doesn't bring T.I. up. But for some reason, T.I. won't stop mentioning her. And I don't think, you know, Iggy started acting more white or, you know, when white folks discovered her, she started acting brand new. She's always had a white fan base. She's a white woman. She's going to have a, ma a majority white fan base any damn way. I mean, the, mo the main consumers of hip hop are white people. When you go to a T.I. concert, a Lil Wayne concert, you're going to see white people there. There's going to be more white people in the audience than black people. 
Usually when I go to concerts, there's mainly white people there. You know what I'm saying? There's black people there too, but it's a majority white people who support hip hop, who buy concert tickets and everything else. So that doesn't make any sense to say that, you know, once she discovered white people are rocking with her. White people are going to stand by their own from day one any damn way. Regardless if she was singing pop, rap, and whatever. She's a blonde haired white girl. She's cute. White women are going to see themselves in her. So she already had a built-in white fan base. So what he's saying just makes absolutely no sense. What it is is he's upset because he tried to pull a Maurice Star, but he didn't reap the benefits like Maurice Star reaped, okay? And because his image is more consciousness and being pro-black, he feels like, you know, him even associating with her is some type of stain on his newfound consciousness. That's the vibe I'm getting from this situation because it just doesn't make any sense, the stuff that he's saying. So anyways, y'all, let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts on this entire messy situation, honey. Once again, concerning T.I. throwing more shots at Iggy. And basically, Iggy's saying, you know what? I've had enough. I'm coming back. She clapped back at T.I. Why she deleted all that? I don't know. Because you know when she posts something on social media, there is no delete. She should have just kept it there instead of deleting it. If you're going to say something, stand 10 toes in it. Because otherwise, you look like you're running scared. But she made some very, very valid points. And she was very honest in the stuff that she did tweet. So anyways, y'all, let's go ahead and get the discussion popping, honey. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. Hit that thumbs up. And most importantly, don't forget to hit the notification bell. Shoot me down with my notification squad, okay? So let me know your thoughts on this latest drama concerning T.I. and Iggy Azalea. Whose team are you on? Are you team T.I.? Are you team Iggy Azalea? Or do you feel like they both need a tall glass to shut the fuck up and move on, okay? So... <laughs> move on because at this point I'm assuming there was some type of hanky panky going on okay so let's go ahead and get the discussion popping go ahead and leave a comment all right deuces